everyone, and welcome to the RV Inspection and Care podcast and video. I'm Dwayne. I'm a certified RV inspector, and today we're going to be talking about how you can spot overall build quality in new RVs as an average RV buyer. Now, there's a lot of negative talk going on online about new RV build quality. Some of it is exaggerated but some of it is well-deserved in many high production brands. Clearly they're moving just too fast to be able to give any real attention on the production line to detail. But some brands are still putting out a good product. And I will say this, generally, the more you pay for an RV, well, then you're probably going to see better build materials and construction methods, and more attention to detail. However, here's the good news. It is possible for even lower cost RVs to be built well too. And today I'm going to show you how to spot overall build quality in any new RV. Now there are some places in RVs that you just can't access. You can't dig up the floor and you can't get into the walls or into the ceilings. They're just not going to let you do that. But here's the good news. There are clues in things you can see, both inside and outside the RV, that will be helpful to show you about the build quality in that RV in areas that are hidden. Now, I recently attended an RV show. And at this show, there were lots of motorhomes. They're one brand right after the other, right next to each other. And I found lots of problems and issues with certain brands. And I feel like it's going to be helpful now to show you what you need to watch for as you're going through new RVs. So let's cover six of the areas here that I feel you need to watch. And that includes RV trim, doors, walls, drawers, seals, and slides. And let's start with the RV trim. Well, here's our first picture of shoddy trim work being done at this RV show. And as you can see here, here's a piece of trim work that's put over two trim boards where they meet together at the top of a slide. And this is supposed to cover the spot where they butt together. Well, as you can see, it's not aligned correctly at all. In fact, it doesn't even look like it's attached on the left-hand side. Next up is a very similar piece of trim on a living room slide, once again at the top. And in this case, the trim board is sticking away from the wall by a couple of inches. There's no way that anybody could have possibly missed this right in the living room as they walked by. Now we're looking at a trim piece on the baseboard and clearly it's away from the wall about an inch or so. Once again, this was easy to spot and it could have been fixed within less than a minute. And here there's two walls in the bathroom that are supposed to meet, but look at the gap between them. And the trim is really poorly applied in this case. It's just awful work. Next up is a case of ceiling trim where the miters come together. Look how poorly this looks. It just looks almost like water has gotten onto it, but there was no evidence of water intrusion. It was just a bad job of putting trim pieces together. Next, we're going to look at the right side and the left side of a door. And here's a trim piece that goes on the floor there. Look at this piece. It looks like it's been held in water or something that stained it on the top and bottom. And then on the left-hand side, it's been rubbed so badly that it's down to the wood. The initial cover is just rubbed right off. But on the opposite side, this is really bad. Take a look at this spot here where they drilled a hole for an electrical cord to come up. 
and they drilled it right into the trim piece as well as through the floor. Not only that, they left all of the shavings just sitting there. Once again, this is a new RV. How would you like to find this kind of work on your new RV? Well, now let's take a look at some of the doors and the way that they were installed on these new RVs. And here is a couple of cabinet doors toward the ceiling on a new RV. And as you can see, look how poorly they are aligned. Look at the gap top and bottom. That's just unacceptable work. Next up is a set of drawers that if you look at the bottom, you can see where the gap should be for this drawer or door that leads to it. And yet you can see that that gap is significantly bigger on the one above it. It was very easy to spot this too, by the way. Next up, this is a door that just never should have been ignored. This is on a spot leading into the bedroom on an RV, and the door is completely off of its hinges altogether. When I examined it, I couldn't even find a way to get it back in place. So there's no way that anybody should have missed this. And finally, here's the back of the door. And as you look at the back, you can see where the back trim has pulled completely away from the door, about three eighths to a half of an inch all the way up and down the door. So again, this should never have been missed, but it's totally unacceptable work. Another place I like to check for overall quality in an RV are the drawers. I go from room to room and just pull drawers out and take a look at them. I look at the sides to see how thick they are. I also look at the slide mechanisms that bring them in and out and how strong and rigid they appear to be. In other words, I'm thinking, how strong is this drawer going to be for what I'm going to put into it? Well, here is one of the worst examples of drawers that I found at this RV show. Just take a look at this. Is that pathetic or what? Another area where you can look to find out more about the quality of workmanship on any RV is to look for the seals and joints and take a look at the sealant there. Here's a slide on the outside where there's a joint and the sealant is totally missing. There's a huge gap here. And notice where the sealant has been applied, how sloppy it is. Next up is another example around a slide. This is the slide molding. And look, there's absolutely no sealant in this particular area. And the molding has pulled away from the side of the RV, exposing the paint edges. Again, very poorly done. In this case, we're talking about a wheel well molding. And I know this is kind of hard to see from this picture, but this wheel well molding has pulled away from the side of the RV because there's no sealant or adhesive holding it there at all. And all of the wheel wells were done this way. And finally, here's a picture of sealant on the outside of an RV on a trim piece. And as you can see, the sealant was just thrown on there, very haphazard, very sloppy, no effort to clean it up whatsoever. And that's an indication of poor workmanship. Finally, look inside and a good area to look at is the bathroom area. Here is a spot where the bathroom wall meets the wall of the RV. And look, it's pulled completely away from the sealant. And nobody would have even seen this if I hadn't been looking for the seals. But it's away almost three quarters of an inch. Clearly, this should have gotten attention before it reached this spot in the show. Another area you could examine on an RV to give you an idea of the kind of quality you're working with is the slide and especially the slide mechanisms. Now on this slide, 
What we're looking at are Schwentech slide mechanisms. And I have no problem with Schwentech as long as they're used on a smaller type of slide, like a bedroom drawer set. But what we're seeing here is that that mechanism is being used on a very long and very heavy slide. And that is not what you want to see. In fact, here's another example of the same type of mechanism being used on an even longer slide. And it's really setting itself up for failure here. And finally, I looked at the side of this slide and clearly you can see that the slide itself has not been aligned correctly because it's scraped off the paint when it goes in and out. That is not quality workmanship and it gives you a clue about the kind of work that's gone on on this RV. The final area where you can look closely in an RV to get clues about the quality of workmanship are the walls. And I go through and look at all of the walls. Now, when you see something like this, where the wallpaper is just pulling completely away from the backing and nobody seems to have done anything to hold it in place, that's not good. Next up, we see this a lot in RVs made by some brands where the assembly line is moving so fast that they really don't have time to give any attention to detail. So when they attach something to the wall, they wrinkle the wallpaper or the board covering and see no need to straighten it out. And it looks awful. Now take a look at this. This is a veneer on a drawer and this veneer is completely pulling away in several places and yet nobody seems to have noticed and here it is in an RV show. And finally, here is where two walls have met together. And clearly the seam has resulted in the wallpaper or wallboard covering on one side being completely wrinkled out of shape and pulled away. This is totally unacceptable. Well, as you can see, I found a lot of problems. There was no shortage of them in that RV show. And let me emphasize this, the examples I showed you in this video, there are lots more that I found that I just didn't put in the video. I couldn't put everything in. Also emphasize one more thing. And that is that these examples were not collected over time. This was in one RV show in one day. Now, I'm the first person to admit that this kind of RV inspection is not perfect. But here's what I believe is very reasonable to assume. That if what you can see isn't done right, then most likely what you can't see is the same or even much worse. And the more problems that you see in an RV or you're noticing as a trend in a brand, it's indicating worse build quality. Now, consistency is a challenge, though, for any RV brand, no matter how good they are. And you're going to find small, obvious issues and problems even in the better brands. However, here's what I think you will find if you apply what I'm showing you today as I have found that those issues and problems are fewer and smaller in the better brands. Now, let me give you an example. At this same RV show, there were lots of motorhome brands next to one another, and it included Numar. And if you followed my channel for a while, you know that I'm a believer in Numar quality. Going through the Numars, of 2024, I could not find any issues in some of their coaches. In others, I found maybe one or two small issues, nothing major. So clearly there is a difference in quality from some brands from one to the other. Now, the more brands that you see, the more RVs you go through, the better picture you're going to get of the whole RV industry and who's doing a good job and who's not. Now, 
what I'm telling you and showing you is going to take a lot of time, a lot of effort. You're going to travel a lot in order to be able to see all these RVs and compare brand to brand to brand. If you don't have that kind of time, well, I've got a way you can save all of that. That's because I've created RV buying guidebooks for categories like the Class A, B, B+, C, Super C, Fifth Wheel, and Travel Trailers, too. And the guidebooks will tell you what brands are better, the ones that are exhibiting better build quality, along with which ones are providing good customer service and better resale value. That way you can just focus on the good brands and you don't have to waste a lot of time trying to figure it all out on your own. But it is true that buying a better built RV usually means that you're going to get better results from that RV. You're going to be happier with that RV. It's going to last better if you maintain it. Now, here's one last point that I want to remind you, though. Always get any RV you buy, whether it's new or used, inspected by a certified RV inspector. And when you get the report on that RV, get those problems fixed before you take delivery if you're working with an RV dealer. If you'll follow that one piece of advice, you're going to most likely have a better buying experience. Hopefully this video has been helpful to help you learn as an RV buyer how to spot and how to buy better built RVs. And that's it for now. Have safe and happy travels, my friends. Until next time. Mm -hmm.